some statistical dependency between exons and neutrons, which might indicate that there, are, there is something there. Information chemistry probably is storing shape and structure. Here are two examples that actually in mechanic and many others uh, field of study, crystalline structure and muscular structure. This is very uh, 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 easy to describe. It has low entropy. This, by the way, when it is very random, there is a long rate dependency. It has much higher uh, entropy and much more information. Can we find a, a, a way to measure this entropy containing structures? A graph entropy, if you are asking, is not the right way to go. Because graph entropy describes maybe complexity of connectivity, but not complexity of the structure. So we don't know. But this is one thing. I will skip this, but basically, information can be measured in many ways. In economy, information measures dollars. Uh, and information is basically, it is called value of information. The difference in economic rewards of informed action versus uninformed action. And actually, there is a difference between amount of information, entropy, and value of information. This depends on the payoff function, depending on the action and decision. And here you, you can have one definition that is a difference between the best decision that you can do for every action. So the maximum amount of decision maker would pay minus, let's say, uh, uh, the, the, the best possible overall decision without knowing which action actually you can take. And actually there is there's a lot of work in this. And by the way, February 12th, we have a speaker from Bama Champagne for our lecture series on scientific information. They will be talking about information and economics. You are very welcome uh, uh, to attend. It will be, uh, maybe I will have a slide about this later. Okay, when we go to quantum, everything collapses. Uh, and actually, the simplest question, we have a conservation of energy, we have conservation of this and that. It is a conservation of, of, of information. I would say that if I leave unfinished paper in my computer, unfortunately, when I come back tomorrow, it won't be finished. Information will not flow in. I have to write and finish this paper. Perhaps what can happen that uh, because of some uh, errors and uh, noise, that actually information can, uh, uh, can actually be uh, evaporated in the environment. So in one sense, in some sense, there is no conservation of Information. But if we go to quantum computing and we agree, uh, and we accept the coherent. The coherent is basically flowing information to surrounding objects that happen very quickly, within 10 to minus 20 seconds. Then actually some physicists believe that information uh, is conserved. We don't know. It's, it's, it's a basic question that we don't know. So there are today challenges. Definitely, we need to understand structure organization and metrics for information there. We need time, space, and control because we need it for wireless computing, biological application, and so on. When you go from microscopic, uh, uh, microscopic in microscopic where shallow postulates do not have, actually, shallow defined entropy through three postulates. And the third postulate does not work in quantum work. Uh, but in massive data, these two things are very important. Uh, 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 that, uh, first of all, uh, 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 the rate at which information is sifted is much bigger than we can handle. And actually, information, the massiveness of data is the overhead and noise. We have to define a new model of noise in order to understand it. Uh, in many aspects, uh, rational and non-cooperative behavior will be important. I will have impact of all of this. I think this is one of the last transparent. So it looks like studying information is fun, is important, and we don't know too much. We have a very good, uh, 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 a wonderful, rigorous channel information that makes wonders and, uh, 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 and a lot of uh, contributions, good contribution in information theory. But I think we need to go to science of information, which will be, we will look at this in much broader sense. And maybe uh, one suggestion is that maybe we should try to 
start something like Information Science Institute. Some of you probably got email from me inviting you to just to join this uh, initiative and we'll probably meet in February and try to see what to do. We might go and try to have some uh, center with some other universities. Uh, okay, lecture series of science information, I don't think yeah, it should be you. Uh, maybe it will work. Let me see if it will work. Okay, probably not blocked. Okay, hello. So I ah ah okay. Lee, here it is. Wonderful. So uh, last year we have three talks: uh, information series, computer science, and physics. Uh, starting this spring, we'll continue it. Nicolas Yanel is, is, a, is a, an economist from Urbana Champagne, and he will call about contracts and asymmetric information. Andrew Baron is a very well known information theory statistician within Yale. And Madhu Sudan, I don't think I have to introduce him to computer scientists. He is actually Naval winner, and he will talk about how a universal semantics for communication. So these are three talks of different aspects of science. Hopefully, it will bring us a better understanding about information and maybe move it forward. Let's get finished here. Let's, if we have one short question, let's, let's take time to do that. Okay, if there is a short question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.